Now, this is one of the most exciting updates in the React ecosystem, React Compiler. I am so freaking excited because now we can go back to our apps and use Next.js 15 release candidate to use this compiler and get rid of a lot of the hooks that we've been using, such as use callback, use memo, memo, and so on. Now I've given a lot of conference talks worldwide, how you can make your React and Next.js applications more performant. Some of the do's and don'ts of adding those hooks that we will be talking about in this specific video. I want to combine all of that knowledge and show you the power of React Compiler and things you need to be careful of while using it. So let's dive. So enough theory, let's look at a quick demo here so you know exactly the power of React Compiler. Here, this app is pretty straightforward. We have a header and a footer. In the header, we have a Dogecoin logo and a text. And then on the footer, I have my company name. Over here, when I click on increase number, it increases the count. When I toggle dark mode, it switches from dark mode enabled to disabled and so on. We are going to go to a tab called as profiler in developer tools. Now this specific tab will allow us to record what's going on with our components. So for example, what you want is if you go to the settings option, make sure in the profiler tab, you have this one checked because it will tell you why each component rendered while profiling. And the other option you want enabled is this one. And this is a really cool option. Every time a component re-renders, it is going to highlight the update. It's going to highlight and flash the component. So let's take a look really quickly. So now I'm going to move this to the right and let's go to this specific blue icon where you can start profiling. And it also says over here, click the record button to start recording. So if I click on this option and now watch what happens when I click on increase number, notice how it highlighted, see how it highlighted the logo as well as the footer. So if I toggle dark mode on and off, it's still, again, the parent is re-rendering. So the footer and the logo are re-rendering too. Now let's stop profiling. And if we scroll to the bottom, it also will tell you why this re-rendered and logo rendered because the parent component re-rendered. So if you think about it, logo as well as footer should not re-render, right? Because why should it? These are dumb components. It literally has text and logo. And also in the bottom, it just has text. So we, it should not re-render at all, but it did. And the way we would prevent re-rendering from happening without React Compiler is essentially by memoizing the logo component. So for example, this is the code for it. If we take a look at this specific code, we have the hook for dark mode. And then we have the increment counter as well. Every time you increase the number, I'm calling set number, which increments the number. Similarly, when you click on the toggle dark mode button, we're displaying the state of it. And we are also getting it from a hook called as use dark mode, which is here. Again, we are wrapping it up in use callback here. And what we need to do is we need to go to the logo component and wrap this up with memo, for example. And this memo is going to surround the entire component. It's going to wrap it up, for example, right here. You can just say function. And what we need to do is say function, logo, and then wrap it up with memo. And what we need to do here is wrap it up with logo. All right. So now we need to do the same thing with footer as well. We are going to memoize it and wrap this entire component with memo too. Same thing here too. We're going to say footer. Let's import memo from React. Let's click on start profiling. Watch what happens when you click on increase number. Yes, the parent component renders, but logo and footer don't. So if I toggle dark mode, there is no blue highlight. So that is pretty awesome. So if I stop profiling, and then go all the way to the bottom, you can just see only the home rendered logo did not render, nor did the footer. So that's exactly what you're looking for. But in this case, we had to know these three hooks, use callback, use memo, memo, and so on. We have to know exactly where to add these hooks. If you are a beginner or a intermediate React developer, you may find this really intimidating, but you have to now figure out 
where exactly to add it. I have a new date for the Next.js workshop. If you're interested, then go to nextjsworkshop.dev to learn the best practices of building Next.js applications. So if you're interested, definitely check out the link in the description or just head over to nextjsworkshop.dev because you may get some launch discounts as well. All right, back to the video. Does this mean you actually should add memo and memoize each and every component in your application because that means your application is performant, right? Well, no, because what these hooks internally do is that they're going to compare the previous state as well as the new state and where in the React tree has the component changed and where should it re-render. And that's not what you're looking for at all because the computation can take really long because it's going to, again, do a diff and compare what changed and what didn't. And that's not what you're looking for. It's way easier for React to re-render sometimes. But again, you have to worry about all of this as a React developer and to make our application performant. But thanks to React Compiler, we don't need to do this. We don't need to worry about this at all. In fact, it reduces usage of these hooks. But again, it doesn't get rid of them because you still need to know them because React Compiler is going to do the best it can. So what does React Compiler do then? Well, React Compiler is going to basically take care of all of this for us. Let's go ahead and add enable React Compiler here. So if we go to the getting started section, one, they have given us this specific hook. You can, you can run this to check the compatibility. So if I run this, then I'm going to say yes. I've installed it. So you can see that it has successfully compiled and it found no usage of incompatible libraries. That means we are good to go. We can use React Compiler. The next thing we want to do is install this specific plugin, which is a ESLint plugin that can run independently to tell you, even if you don't use the compiler, to tell you, hey, are you following all the rules? Are there any violations? Again, you don't have to fix all the rules right away, but this will allow you to adopt React Compiler. Now, let's go ahead and enable react compiler so if we go to the next year section you can see that we, we, we need to get the this specific next year's release candidate as well as the babel plugin react compiler so let's install it whoops let's copy this whole thing we don't need the first option let's just install this all right so now let's what we need to do is add this specific line in react compiler now if we go to our next config file right here we need this specific file you can just say react compiler as true let's also get rid of the hooks the memoize the memoization that we added to now same thing we don't need any of the memoization here because now we have react compiler so now let's go to our application and now open up developer tools and run the same test again. So if I go to profiler and refresh the page and let's click on start profiling, increase number. Again, you can see that we, we don't have the memo wrappers around. We don't, we are not using memoization at all, but still it doesn't highlight anymore because the compiler is basically taking care of this for us, which is pretty nice. If I stop profiling, and if I click on this, you can, you can see that with a sparkle emoji, this component has been auto memoized by React Compiler, which is exactly what we're looking for. So this specific message is really, really nice. So that's the power of React Compiler. We don't have to do a lot because it's doing a lot for us. So how can you start adopting React Compiler? Because it can be really scary as there might be so many components in your application and you don't want React Compiler to accidentally break anything. So the React team has offered this specific option where you can set the compilation mode to be annotation. So for example, if I go to next config file here, we can say the compilation mode is gonna be annotation. This means we can basically opt into React Compiler. So we can say which components we want React Compiler to include and which we don't. So for example, if we go to our page file here, what we would do is we need to just add use memo. This means that this specific page will be compiled by React Compiler, any of its children. 
But let's say we don't add that, then our component is going to re-render. Now let's refresh the page, start profiling. And then if we increase the number, see the blue highlights are back. The components are getting highlighted. That means they are getting re-rendered because React compiler is off. You can add the annotation mode and then Inside here, you need to opt in to use memo. By adding this, it would mean that a specific page now will be considered by React Compiler, will be included and compiled by React Compiler. So if we go back again and let's start profiling, increase number, toggle dark mode, we are back to using React Compiler again. So this is how you can basically opt into React Compiler versus getting your entire application compiled by React Compiler in case of any breaking changes. Does this mean that you can just forget about all of these hooks that we talked about? Use callback, use memo, memo, and all of these performance hooks? Well, not really. React Compiler is great. It will do a lot for you. And as this specific experimental compiler gets shipped, then it will be awesome because we, it will optimize a lot of our React components by default. But we still need to know all of these hooks because there might be cases where the React compiler may not do a good job or may want you to chime in there. And in that case, if you can optimize your complex components further, then you should and take that into account as well. But React compiler makes life so much easier. I'm really excited for this specific change. Thank you so much for checking out this specific video. Please comment below and let me know if you're going to check out the React compiler and you're going to try it out or not. If you did, what are your thoughts and experiences? What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.